All right, everyone, it's a happy day because as of now, Beijing Biden's approval is officially underwater. And keep in mind, that's in push polls. His disapproval edging up towards 45, his approval hovering at around 50 uh, or slightly below that. That's the first time that that's happened since his asterisk administration began. And again, that's with polls like the Hill Harris, like YouGov, that are oversampling Democrats. Now, in the case of some polling firms like YouGov, it's, I believe, accidental. YouGov has been fairly straightforward and also fairly accurate for a number of elections. The problem is they appear to have adjusted their model, their sampling, based on perception of turnout. And so if you have a Hong Kong election going on where you've got a legendary 80 million votes and you adjust your sampling size accordingly based on the perception that there are considerably more uh, energized and, and registered Democrats in the country, and that's not actually the case, Hong Kong, for various reasons, uh, then your sample's off. This is why Rasmussen appears to be tacking closer to reality. He, there, Beijing Biden is already completely underwater with his disapproval higher than his approval. Looking at aggregates has become less and less meaningful over time because maybe 10 years ago, the push polling was more scant. Because things have become so politicized, I think in some cases polling firms bow to public pressure to missample simply because of the perception that otherwise they won't be considered woke enough. <laughs> They'll be considered verboten. They'll, they won't get uh, mentioned as often by legacy media outlets. Of course, we've seen this explicitly. Which polls got mentioned for four years there when Donald Trump was president? Polls that he liked got mentioned by him, and polls that showed him underwater got mentioned by literally everyone else. And in the vast preponderance, when you're talking about ad revenue, when you're talking about clicks, the latter is significantly larger, even if the audiences are similar, simply because there are so many more sites involved. I think that the legacy media's propaganda has actually incentivized polling firms to deliberately missample polls. I genuinely believe that. We've got other polling that shows that Trump is now more approved of than Joe Biden. Now part of this is is just just cognitive bias. People typically, even we see this with W. W left office in the 30s in approval. Now his approval is considerably higher. He was matched up against Trump, who was the president at the time, and so Trump was taking flack and W wasn't. The same is happening with Biden. Biden was outside of the fray. He, in fact, he was an absentee campaigner. Hong Kong again. This is why he got 80 million votes, because he could get five people to show up uh, in, in order to hear him speak, and then 20 other people protesting. Uh, but he was largely absent. He tried not to appear in public while campaigning whenever possible. Well, you can't take as much flack if you're not there. <laughs> so Trump had the opposite uh, in mind. He liked to throw himself out there literally every day. He fed off that energy and found that amusing. But I'm glad that Joe Biden is effectively a lame duck now, uh, which he is. Uh, he hasn't accomplished anything. The only thing now is to ram through the infrastructure deal, which isn't even about infrastructure. And keep in mind, there is the possibility it gets bogged down in the reconciliation process because you still need Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, at the very least in the Senate, to agree to the uh, terms that the House develops. But in the House, you need to have those leftoid uh, representatives, AOC, Ilan Omar, and so forth. They need to agree to it too, and so you have to go back and forth. It's very difficult to envision a scenario in which the infrastructure bill in its current form uh, is voted through. It'll have things cut from it by Manchin, by Cinema, by the GOP that agreed to advance in debate. It'll also have things added to it by the leftoids in the House where the Democrats have their slim majority. It might not be possible for them to even pass it. It might, it might be that a year from now we still have no, no bill of that kind. By the way, that would be the best possible uh, opportunity for us to stave off Bidenflation. $3.5 trillion is a lot of money. It will inflate the currency. It will drive prices high. Uh, it'll be you know, paid for by printed funny money. It's not going to be paid for by taxes. If anything, Beijing Biden's proposal to re restore the limitless salt deduction will lower taxes on the higher classes. Your revenue will fall at a time when you also have significantly higher than before unemployment, in which wages are stagnant, in, in which you have coronatarianism absorbing, e absorbing enormous amounts of money. By the way, they keep trying to do the eviction moratorium thing. They haven't even dispersed most of the funds that were allocated to it. Some emergency, they didn't even give people their fucking money. 
So Beijing Biden, uh, his approval is now arguably below 50%. Again, keep in mind, that's in polls that oversample Democrats, in some cases, by double digits. This is why the aggregated number that I used to rely upon, I no longer fully rely upon it because it's clearly not accurate. That's about all. Peace out.